Hello everyone, this is Kenneth Brandy from Cambriotech and welcome back to the channel. So in this series of videos, we are learning Python and this is specifically SNG 207, Programming for Engineers, a course taught at the University of Ghana. So if you have been following along, we have this particular structure and we have put this together like the chapters of a book. So currently, we are on chapter 19 where we will be discussing a student MIS kind of application we are building over here. So if you haven't followed along, um, kindly do so. You need the knowledge on functions and classes, object-oriented programming, in order to make sense out of what we are going to build over here. So I'll collapse this so that we have a much wider slit. Now this has been put together in sections. So for instance, we are going to look at, in this first video, we are going to look at section one, the things we are supposed to do over here. Then we come to the second video where we are going to discuss section three. And I think this is also going to form another section. So let me just do a control C and a control V over here. And let me call this section three. All right. So now let's discuss what we have in section one. And on line one, we have what we already know. And I'm saying that a class is a blueprint for creating objects. In the previous video, we discussed the baking pan and stuff like that. But then in this video, we are going to look at a more practical one. So now in this code implementation of object-oriented programming OOP in Python, we shall implement an object-oriented database for the University of Ghana student MIS. And I believe this is something relatable. At least every student has one way or the other interacted with the student MIS. We go onto that platform to register courses and stuff like that. Lecturers also go onto that platform to, I mean, do certain things, uh, input results and stuff like that. So we are going to look at how a typical application would um, be implemented, the logic behind the code. So in the first section, we need to define a class person. So we are going to move um, according to this instruction. So I'll simply do class and I'll say person. And I'll bring in a colon over here. This we already know. Now let me just do a pass over here so that we don't find ourselves in any problem. And the second instruction we have over here is to create a person object from the person class. So this is very simple. So I can say person one is equal to, and it's as simple as this. This we already discussed in the previous video. So this we have created an object and we can actually proceed to printing this out. So for instance, I can say print and inside of print, I will do person one. And now when I save this and run this, we do get this showing up over here. So underscore, underscore, main, underscore, underscore, dot, person, object at. And I keep on insisting that there's some memory location inside of our computer RAM. We don't have to worry so much about this. But basically, this is just an indication telling us that this person one object was indeed created from this person class. Now, the next thing we want to do, which is I'm reading from line 9, the point 3. And it says use the constructor method to define attributes for the person so we want to use the constructor method this we already discussed in the previous video and that's why i said if you haven't watched that video go back because i break it down to um, the very fine details so we are going to use the constructor method and that's also very simple so we come inside of our class and we see dev because it is a method or a function within a class now say underscore underscore and the constructor method has the name called init underscore underscore and i'll bring in a parenthesis over here so now the first thing i would want to do is of course i need to pass in the instance of the class which we use self now i'll do a comma now the question is we need to define attributes for the person so these attributes are the things that's going to define a person in the case of a baking pan we're looking at um, things like the flour the special ingredient and other things now a person is not going to be defined by the flour, special ingredients, and other things. But then, in the case of our MIS system, a person is going to have attributes like, for instance, first name. So I'll pass in first name over here, and I can say last name. We can add in age and other things, but then let's just limit it to first name and last name. Uh, but I mean, let me just add age over here too. So we have first name, last name, and age. And I'll bring in a colon over here. Now I need to set these attributes. 
which we already know so i can see self dot and like i said this is the only time i encourage students to be doing copying and pasting over here because um if you get it wrong over here it's going to cause a lot of problems so we have self dot first name is equal to first name then i'll press enter then i'll do self dot and i also come and copy last name over here so i'll do a control c and a control v is equal to and i'll put last name over here then finally i'll do self dot and i'll come and copy age over here so self dot age is equal to age over here so now we have used a constructor method and we have defined attributes for the person class and that's exactly what we have done over here now let me just come back here a little bit all right so now currently as it stands if i save my work and run this we are catching an error over here and this was quite expected good now it says there's a type error the person dots in it method we have defined over here is missing three required positional arguments which was first name last name and age and that's i mean i create over here based on the knowledge we have so once we have a parameter in here we need to provide an argument at the time of creating the object because whenever an object is created from this person class this init method is automatically going to be invoked so now what i want to do or what i want to see over here is something for first name and for first name i'm going to say kwame then i'll do a comma then for last name i'm going to say in chroma then for age i'm going to say 20. so now when i save this and i run this we don't get the problem because we have indeed provided these values over here as arguments that will be sent into the init method as i mean into these parameters and they'll be assigned in the block we have over here so over here we can also use the dot operator to go into the person object so now when i say person dot i have access to age over here so now when i save this and run this i do get 20 over here in that same way if i'm to do person dot first name save this and now run this i get kwame over here if i'm to do person dot last name save this and run i do get in chrome over here so everything is working out perfectly over here now let's move on to line 10 and that's the last point we have over here in this particular section and it says we should write a full name method that returns the full name of the object well that's very interesting so we can come in here and since there's a method within person i can use the dev keyword and i'm going to call this full underscore name and full underscore name is the method and as a matter of principle i need to bring in self over here and what are we saying we are saying that this method returns the full name of the person so let me just use the return keyword over here and in this instance let me also use the formatted string so so in this particular instance the person's first name is kwame and the last name is enchroma so within this full name method we are to return something like kwame enchroma and that looks very cool so over here what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring a placeholder over here and of course you are using a formatted string so we can do this and now i'm going to say self dot and because i'm using self which is the instance of the class something we discussed in the first three or four videos we dealt with classes we can have access to for instance first name over here and i'll do a space then i'll also do self dot last name so this is going to be a method full name that's going to return indeed the full name of the object we have over here so now if i'm to do person one dot and i have access to full name over here now when i do it this way and run this we should be expecting this this is not exactly what you wanted and if you have been following along you definitely know what's happening because there's a method which indeed is a function we need to bring in a parenthesis whenever we are calling it so i have my parenthesis over here this way and now when i run this i do get Kwame chroma over here now this is looking good and well it appears we are done okay but then let's try and do some few things that'll make this person class 
very interesting and this is what i want students to do whenever you look at what i've done that should inspire you to look at other things so let's say you want to write another method that returns the initials so the initials is going to be like the first letter of the first name and the first letter of the second name okay so in this case the initials is going to be k n all right so now this is what we can do i can do a def and i'll say name underscore initials so this is going to be the name of the method and of course i need to pass in self over here and this is going to be as simple as this so i'll put in a formatted string and in here of course i need self because that's the instance of the class and i'd want to grab for instance first of all first name and i just don't want to grab the whole of first name okay remember this is a sequence this in itself is a strange so i can do the slicing and when i bring this square bracket i can pass in zero over here and what zero simply means is zero is going to be the first character we have over here we discussed this when we we're looking at strings good and i can do for instance i can come in here and do a dot there's not going to change anything i just want to have something like k dot n all right then i'm going to come in here and i'm going to do self dot last name and i'm also going to bring in the initial i mean the index zero over here which is going to pick n over here so now when i save this everything is looking good now if i'm to come in here and i would want to print because i'm returning i need to wrap everything up in a print function so now i can do person one dot and i'm going to say name initials and since this is a method i need to bring in the parentheses over here to call it so now when i run this of course we do get the first one printing out over here the full name and also we get kn over here let me comment the full name and now let me run this again and we get kn that's the initial now let's create another person object so let's call this person two and this is also going to come in from the person class and let me use i normally don't use uh, female names over here sorry for that so now let me say mary asante and Mary Asante is 18 years of age. So this is the person two objects we have created from the person class. Now let me just clear everything I have over here. Now I can do print. And now if I'm to do person two dot and I come in for full name and call it this way. If I run my code, I do get Mary Asante over here. If I'm to do person two dot name initials call it this way and run this i do get m dot a because that's exactly what we expect the first character in mary is m and we are using this to grab the first i mean passing the index zero and the a is also the second i mean the first character of the um last name now there's something i would want us to do over here and that's basically setting out an email attribute so you know that when you register onto the student mis normally what happens is at the time you buy forms at the university of ghana you need to do a registration and that registration you need to include your name and stuff like that now this is almost like what you are doing so when you are registering some person objects will be created for you with some maybe an index or something then this information is what you are going to provide but then the system will automatically generate an email for you and that email if for instance your name is Kwame Nkrumah let me put this out in the comment over here the email is going to be or it's going to look like k dot Nkrumah at ug dot no sorry at st dot ug dot edu dot gh something like this so the at st dot ug dot edu dot gh is the domain that's the school address system we have over here and this information is basically going to come out from what you have provided your first name and your last name 
so we can also implement same over here so this is what we are going to do i can do something like self dot email and self dot email i can use a formatted string over here and i'm using a formatted string over here because i have access to first name so i can bring in a placeholder over here and i'll say first name and for first name i just need the first character so i'll pass in index zero over here then i'll do dots and i'll bring in an, another place over hold over here and i'll bring in last name then i can do at st dot ug dot edu dot gh so this is going to be valid over here so now let's try printing out for instance the email address of person two and because this is an attribute over here we can simply call it up this way so i'm going to say person two dot and if i'm to come in over here you could see that i have email over here so now when i click on this and save this if i'm to run this we do get m asante at st.ug.edu.gh all right now i'd want to have this all in lowercase so if i would want to have this all in lowercase now primarily this is a strange so of course it is a strange because we declared this in a single quotation mark as you can see over here and this is prefixed by f showing that this is a formatted strange so there are some strange methods we can add over here so for instance i can do a dot and whenever i do a dot i want to go into the strange methods and now i can bring in the dot lower method and i'll call it up this way so now everything is going to return lowercase so now when i run this i do get m.asante at st.ug.edu.gh this is very simple now somebody will be asking why didn't we pass in the email as a parameter over here now the email is not going to be a parameter over here simply because when you are registering onto the system for the first time whenever you bought forms you didn't put in your email address the email was automatically generated for you because if we are to put email over here then of course we need to also pass it inside of this as an argument and the system will not be able to accommodate that because if two people have the same name then the same email address is going to come out and that's where you have instances where there's going to be like some numbers prefixing your names and stuff like that but that's something we are going to discuss later on so basically we have done this i mean we have completed everything in session one and even done more because here we have some extra parameters we are passing um extra stuff we are putting up over here and then we have also defined the full name method and the initials method all right so this is going to be the end of the first session of this video now you find value out of the content i'm putting out over here kindly support my work by subscribing to the cambro tech channel also don't forget to hit on the notification button so that anytime i release a video you'll be duly notified share this video with friends and family who find this content very useful at cambro tech we say learn programming you can do it bye bye and catch you in the next video